millennia ago, Dalits were called the untouchables of India. Enforced into the degrading work of manual scavenging, the practice of cleaning excrement from toilets and open drains by hand in exchange for leftover food. The only thing that they have to protect their bodies is oil, each other, and their prayers. You know, thank you for specifically focusing on that because it is a scene that stays with everybody, including myself. And, you know, it's been talked about. I've, as part of my research for this interview today, I was listening to your conversations and many people want to ask you about this particular scene when we have these two Dalit men who are manual scavengers enter what is clearly, and there is no polite way to say it, they enter a tank filled with human excrement, human shit. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who are from that community, this is part of our life's reality. We know that exists. Mm -hmm. But to an average Western movie goer, these scenes might also bring to mind another film that dealt with a similar theme, but in a completely different context. I'm talking about British filmmaker Danny Boyle's 2008 film, Slumdog Millionaire. Mm -hmm. It opens with a scene that is famous where the child protagonist dives into a pool of human excrement to extract a photo of his favorite movie star. In origin, also, we see Miss Wilkerson's character take an auto to her hotel, which seems to be located in a budget traveler friendly neighborhood in New Delhi, a place that some have said arguably a Pulitzer Prize winning American journalist might not choose to stay at. So I want to ask you, were you worried about the pitfalls of falling into exoticizing India the way many Western, Western filmmakers have done in the past? Yes, yes, I definitely, um, I definitely wanted to be as cognizant, aware of, of those pitfalls. And yet I also wanted to lean into the stories that Isabel Wilkerson told me. You know, she talked to me about trying to cross a, a street with, it looked like the cars were coming from six or seven directions. Um, so when I went to Delhi, that was happening in areas that were not where the fancy tourist hotels were. She told me a story about walking out of where she was staying directly across from the street that she had to negotiate. Um, she talked about being picked up from the airport uh, by, you know, by a, 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 a sweet man, you know, kind of um, uh, who, who uh, you know, gave her a lovely smile. Um, trying as much as possible to stay true to the stories that she told me. Um, and so that's how I rendered them. Now, later someone said, well, she would be at a fancy hotel. But the interesting thing is I think folks forget um, that uh, writing in the United States may not be as lucrative as folks think. And, I know. <laughs> and that, and that um, you know, writers and artists, you know, if you're not um, a superstar, you know, uh, get paid every few years and have to stretch things. And writing a book about cast is not a lucrative hot topic. Um, so I think some of the assumptions about who she is and how she lives, like someone said to me the other day, she's carrying a Louis Vuitton bag, you know? And I was like, I carry a knockoff Louis Vuitton bag that costs $25 on the street. Like, you never know what someone's life is like. And mm -hmm. so I think those criticisms are valid or those questions are valid, but certainly it, it, it was less about exoticizing India because I don't think it's possible. There's no place you can put a camera in India from the airport to the most beautiful hotel to you know any street and not find beauty to me in the faces of the people, in the, in the, in the colors. I've never seen so much color in buildings, in clothes, in cars, in, it's just, it's sometimes I go to New York and I was like, wow, New York feels like black and white and India feels like a, a film in color. Feel like I'm in the Wizard of Oz all of a sudden. It's just so electric with energy and life. And so that's what we wanted to capture. And, um, 
And so, yeah, I accept any, any criticism, any, any thoughts that people have about it and, and just want people to engage with it. You know, we don't have to agree, um, but we have to do our best. And that's what I did.